finished making our masters for each filter. So we have an LRGB, and if you've done narrowband, you should have a master for each of those. The next step in the process is to look at our master images, all of them, and decide how we want to crop them. We do want to crop them because you may remember that when we stacked them together to make the masters, we ended up with some edges of the photos that weren't very good. And so we need to make sure that we get those out. The first thing we want to do is just go ahead and open up our master images. So we'll go under File, Open, and we're going to go to our Masters folder. And here are our four images that we stacked in the previous process with image, image integration. We'll go ahead and open those up. And it looks like they've uh, PixInsight has already gone ahead and done an auto stretch for us. Again, we know that because we can see the green line under the identifier tab here, um, which is on the left side of the image. And if we didn't have that, I'm going to go up here and click this guy. This is the um, screen transfer function, enables and disables the screen transfer function. The screen transfer function is um, essentially a stretch function. And we'll go ahead and turn that off. And so this is what we would see. Believe it or not, even though this is the red, this is from the red filter. Uh, believe it or not, this is the actual data in the image that we have for the red filter. It's not that much, but we can go ahead and stretch it and see that. And we do a stretch later on, um, later on in the process to actually be able to see all the detail that we're seeing now. Okay, so um, we want to look at each one of these. I'm going to go over here and close the process console. And I'm going to move, there's the red image. I'll move the lumen down here and the green down here. And all of them, here's the blue, all of them have this kind of bad edge at the bottom and on the left-hand side. It doesn't look like there's anything on the right that I can see. Um, we do have some, we do have a little bit of vignetting going on, but we'll get, we'll get rid of that too. Um, the, the edges, the bad edges are maybe not that easy to see, but if we look down here at the bottom, this is the lumen image, we can see that there's kind of a dark band across the bottom, and we want to get rid of that. So um, we're going to go ahead and pick a single image that has the most obvious or the worst edges that need to be dealt with, and I'm going to say the blue image maybe because I can see kind of a band that's a little bit higher up here. Maybe it's the same as in the lumen, but we'll start with the blue. So I'm going to go ahead and um, not close these other images, but I'm going to go ahead and put them away. So this is a little thing that PixInsight has. It's not minimized, but it's this guy over here. So minimize would take it down and, and get rid of it completely. Uh, not get rid of it, but minimize it to a, to a different location. We want to just be able to see the names of the images here. So we're going to just go ahead and, and do that here. All right, so we have just our blue image open. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. And yeah, we can see we've, we've got a bit of a bad edge here and a bad edge over here. So um, for the camera that we have, the proportion of pixels uh, length to uh, height here is, is about is three to two. Not about three to two, it is three to two. So it's nice to be able to keep that proportion. That's a nice proportion to have. Um, you know, you could have, you might end up with, you might have a square chip, for example, in the camera. We have a nice rectangular one uh, with a nice proportion of three to two, which is a nice aesthetic to work with. Under process, uh, to get to get rid of this edge, we're going to crop the images. And remember, we have to crop all of them exactly the same. We went through all that work with the registration when we used the star alignment, and we picked out the one lumen image that had the best full width half maximum. And we aligned all the images to that one lumen image. And if we don't crop them the same, we're going to end up with masters that aren't lined up properly with one another, where the stars are in different locations from image to image. So even though we've got four images to work with instead of 150 some, which is what we originally had, 
We still want to make sure that we keep the alignment correct, which means we need to crop all the images exactly the same. So we're going to go up under process, all processes, and if you scroll down here, you'll see a tool called crop. We're not going to use that. We're actually going to use a nicer tool called dynamic crop, which is down a little bit lower, dynamic crop. This is going to allow us to apply the same crop uh, to each image with a little less pain, um, where we don't have to worry um, too much about that we're doing it exactly the same. So uh, we're going to go to dynamic crop here, and everything's in gray, which means we need to reset the tool. We do this with this lower right-hand corner, and now we have everything is now selected. Because we want to keep the proportions at approximately three to two. Now, I will say that might change depending on the image that you're doing. Sometimes you have to crop it in a different way. But let's go ahead and, and keep it at three to two. So we're going to change the width to 3000. And if we select somewhere else in here, you'll see that you'll see that the, the left and right edges have come in um, for the width a little bit. And we'll change the height to 2000 and we'll crop, uh, sorry, click somewhere else. And you'll see that we've taken a little bit out. I'm not sure that this is really enough um, to get there. We do have, um, unfortunately, we're probably gonna lose this little tiny galaxy up here and there's a little galaxy down here. We might lose those. But let's go to a more, slightly more severe crop. So let's say 2700 to 1800. That's still maintaining our three to two ratio. And that looks pretty good. Um, we did lose this little guy and we lost this little guy, but that's okay. We're going to, before we actually apply it, to the image, the crop to the image. Remember that we have to apply the same crop to the other three images that we have, to the, to the red, the lumen, and the green. And so we want to save these settings. And one easy way to save this, I'm assuming that you're just going to crop all four of these in the same session. You're not going to do one and then come back a couple days later and do another one. We're going to go ahead and drag this blue triangle onto the desktop. And this is now called process one. We can go ahead and we can go ahead and uh, rename it. We'll just rename it as crop. And what I did there is I clicked on that top little icon. And you don't have to do you don't have to rename it. It's just this is just kind of nice to see that this is what this process is. Now we're going to go ahead and apply the crop because what this what this little process icon down here has done it it, it has saved these settings. So the settings are exactly the same. Oh, one other thing I want to mention with the dynamic crop. We have the width and the height here. Anchor X and anchor Y is where the center of the image is. And depending on what you want to do, you may want to change that. So I'm going to try and remember that this is um, 1536. And I'm going to just jokingly change that to anchor, uh, to anchor X 1000. So that what that's saying is in the x-axis, which is the width, I'm putting the center of that at pixel number 1000, which is more over to the left. If I put it back to 1536 and click again, we're okay. If I were to add some to this, let's make it 1800, for example, just randomly. Let's make it 1900, randomly it's going to move the crop over to the left, uh, excuse me, to the right, cutting out more of the left, and it's going to put the galaxy off to the side. Now, this is actually a good thing to understand because depending on what your image is, um, I'm thinking of NGC 7331, for example, which is a big spiral galaxy, but it's got a lot of little satellite galaxies nearby or more distant galaxies and they would be kind of over in this area. And we might want to have the center of the image somewhere in between with the main galaxy off to one side or the other. So that's what the um, anchor X and anchor Y do. We don't need to do that with this particular image. 
Um, and with anchor Y, we would move the crop up or down. So if I change anchor Y to, let's say, 1,200, you can see that it's going to move it down, and et cetera, et cetera. OK. Um, and now I am forgetting what that used to be. So I'm going to go ahead and close the dynamic crop window. And this will be a good instance of opening our little process down here. And this is going to have the original settings that we had with the anchor X and the anchor Y, and then also the width at 2700, the height at 1800. And now we, we are ready to go ahead and apply that to this image by just, um, we can drag it over, you can do it that way, or you can hit the green checkbox and that will do it as well. All right, so now we have our cropped blue image. We're going to go ahead and save this. And we'll just go ahead. This is the master's folder. We're going to go ahead and select that, and that will maintain the name of it. But we're going to go up a level to cropped, and we'll go ahead and click Save. And again, we just click OK. And that's fine. And we'll go ahead and close, come back here, we'll close the window there. We'll close dynamic crop and we'll close the B image. Um, you will get this warning this, sometimes. Um, this image has not been modified since it was saved. So in other words, this is what we've actually have just saved. And it's been processed in PixInsight. It's processing history, stores all the applied information. Unsafe processed instances will be permanently lost. That's okay. We'll go ahead and click yes, and that'll be gone. Now let's open up the next um, next image that we have, which is in this case, looks like the red image. I'll bring it over here and make it a little bit bigger. And we're gonna apply the same crop. Well, we have this nice little process down here, this nice little process that we saved, the dynamic crop. We're gonna go ahead and open it, and you can see it automatically put in the crop that we want. We'll go ahead and instead of applying it this time uh, the way we did with the blue triangle, we're going to go ahead and click the green check mark, which is the execute. And there we have it. We'll go ahead and save this guy. Again, we can click on this in the previous folder to get the, to get the name where we want it. We'll go ahead and open up the crop folder. And we have now saved it here. Close the console, close dynamic crop, close the red. We get the same warning. I could put don't ask anymore, but I kind of like to know when I close something just to make sure that I don't make a mistake. I do want to see what this says. And we're done there. The next image is the lumen. And just put it there. Won't make it bigger at this point. Dynamic crop, check. Save as, bump, 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 bump. Click OK. And close the console, close the dynamic crop, close the lumen image, click yes. And the last one we have to do is the green image. Dynamic crop, check mark, bump, save. We'll go ahead and click the green one here, come up to cropped, and done, and done, and done. Close the process console. Now, we still have the this crop, um, a crop process little tab open here. And if we want to get rid of it at this point, and we don't need it anymore, um, we can go ahead and just um, kind of double, I kind of double click with the track, uh, the trackpad on my mouse, uh, on my Mac, and go ahead and delete that, and we are done. One other thing about crop I do want to mention, um, it's better to be conservative with this at the beginning. So we want to get rid of those edges. That's true. We do want to get rid of those edges. Um, if we don't get rid of them completely, we're just going to have to get rid of them later in a process. So 
Go ahead and get rid of those edges, but get rid of just what you need to do. We can crop later. We can crop any time after this process. We can crop all the, we can get to the very last image that we do, which will be in Photoshop. We can get to that last image and say, that's pretty good. We can still crop it if we want to. But once something is cropped, you can't add in the data that was on the edges again, unless you go all the way back to these original masters. So once you've cropped something and you've cropped those edges out, that, that data, those stars, whatever little things are around the edges, those aren't coming back unless you go back to the original masters. All right, I think that's enough about how to crop images. Um, if we go to our next folder up, which is our cropped folder, um, we will see that we have each of these cropped and if we were to stack them they'd still line up exactly on top of one another which is what we want. The next um, process is we're actually going to start working individually if you look at the folders um, with just the lumen and we're going to make we're going to really work on the lumen really hard to bring out a lot of detail and then we're going to work on separately just the RGB and then finally we'll combine them and that's when we start getting really into the weeds in terms of getting out some nice color and detail but for now um, everything that we've done up to this point has gotten us to where we have these four masters that have been cropped the way we want them and we will be ready to move on to working with just the lumen image next thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time